Hey, this is George Mazzell again. We're ready for passage four. Hope you've had a chance to read this and go over it first. Now we're gonna go over this together. Let me start by reading again. Passage four, a bomb calorimeter is used to determine the amount of heat released when a substance is burned in oxygen. The heat measured in kilojoules is calculated from the change in temperature in the water in the bomb calorimeter. Table one shows the amounts of heat released when different foods were burned in a bomb calorimeter. Table two shows the amount of heat released when different amounts of sucrose, which is table sugar, were burned. Table three shows the amount of heat released when various chemical compounds were burned. So we'll take a look at the bomb calorimeter just to make sure we understand what this looks like. We've got the sample of food in the center, We've got this water jacket around it, and the temperature rise that we're going to see by burning this is gonna be indicated with this thermometer. So now we're ready to look at our table. Never just jump past your tables. Take a minute and look at each table before going to the questions. Table one shows us these four foods, bread, cheese, egg, and potato. We're using the same amount of mass, one gram, and look at the table. The table has all the numbers in different order. You don't have it in an all ascending order or descending order. It's scattered throughout. So the first thing you ought to do is, aha, when the ACT gives me information like that, there's, gonna bound, there's bound to be a question that deals with this information not being in order. Just keep that in mind, all right? Now we go to table two. As the amount of sucrose increases, what happens to the heat released? It increases all the way. We see that it's just it's increasing steadily. No matter how we do it, it's about a one-to-one -one relationship. Table three, chemical compounds, and they list these different chemical compounds and the amount of heat released from them as additional information here. Okay, now, number 20. According to tables one and two, as the mass of successive sucrose samples increased, the change in water temperature produced when the sample was burned most likely did what, okay? We're talking about the sucrose, table two. As you increase the sucrose, the amount of heat that you're generating is increasing. The ACT expects you to know that as more heat is released, what's gonna happen to the temperature? Has to go up, so it increases only which is F. You get more heat out, you're going to get more of a temperature increase. Now we go to the next one, number 21. Which of the following graphs best illustrates the relationship between the heat released by the foods listed in table one and the change in water temperature? Okay, so we saw this change in water temperature. We're wanting to look at the temperature. This, we go back to this table. We see that when we used the uh, potato, we got a 2.7 degree C change in water with 3.2 kilojoules of heat released. We go up to the next one, the eggs got 6.7 kilojoules of heat, temperature went up 5.6 degrees C. As the, we get to the 10, it goes up eight, the 17 goes up 14. So we're seeing a pretty much steady increase, more heat released, higher temperature. So we look for the table that shows us that, I mean a graph. The graph B shows us that as more heat is released, more temperature goes up. That's exactly what we're looking for, so the answer is B. 22, based on the data in table two, one can conclude that when the mass of sucrose is decreased by one half, the amount of heat released when it is burned in a bomb calorimeter will do what? Now this is one where they're once again wanting to see if you understand what's going to happen with the heat. They've given you the table and you see that it's ascending and they've got it intentionally designed so that it goes up 0.1 all the way up to two and four and you see the heat released continues to go up. But they ask the question, sort of backwards. They ask you, what is going to happen if you decrease the amount of sucrose by half? So what we're gonna do, we're gonna come up here and we're gonna find, here's what I've got with the four grams is 64. I cut it in half to two, I get 32. So I cut the amount of heat released in half. And that's what the answer is, decreased by one half. Number 23, which of the following lists the foods in tables one and two in increasing order of the amount of heat released per gram of food? Okay, so we come over here always start with the one that's releasing the least amount of heat or the, the lowest value. Look for one you can easily pick off either the absolute highest or the absolute lowest. In this case, we're looking for the lowest. The lowest one is potato. 2.7 degrees C change in water, 3.2 kilojoules heat released is the lowest. So we're looking for the one that's gonna list the potato. You always take a double check. What do they want? In increasing order, not decreasing order. They will switch that around on you in increasing order. So we're gonna pick potato for the one on the left, and guess what? That got us down to just one answer. All you had to do is get potato, and the rest of them are already in order. So circle A as your answer for number 23. 24, based on the information in tables one and two, the heat released from the burning of five grams of potato in a bomb calorimeter would be closest to which of the following? Five grams, remember our table, shows us one gram. 
One gram releases three of uh, the potato releases 3.2 kilojoules. We're doing five. Makes sense. You just multiply by five. Five times three is 15, making H the answer. Okay, that wraps up passage four. The next passage is passage five. Go ahead and set a stopwatch. If you look ahead, that one has five questions. You should be able to do this one in four minutes. Do it. Go ahead and come back to this video, and we'll go over it together. Thanks. We'll see you there.